Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. It's time for us to have our very first guest with us. Now, she is an actor and a filmmaker, an internationally recognized filmmaker. She, is, um, she started out as an actress and has grown to become a producer of international record. Her debut, her debut feature film production, Just Not Married, was one of the eight Nollywood movies officially selected that premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival. Today, we're joined by Judith Aldu Fort. Judith, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Hey. Thank you. Just, me. Judith, it just be like, say... Corona is not fresh. really... Coronavirus is not in your area. The lockdown is not the spreading. The way you fresh like this. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Ah, it seems that... It, some, some people say that this uh, pandemic has been a, a, a blessing in disguise too because uh, normally they go to hustle, 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 hustle. But this time, they all use anti rest. So is it the same case for you? Are you... Are you still okay with the and with the situation? Is it a blessing in any way for you? Well, yeah, it's true. Um, you know how our job is. We really have no time to rest. Um, so this was an opportunity for us to to rest. Yeah. But we have over rest. <laughs> <laughs> you know that too much. You can't uh, enter. Okay, so uh, before we continue this uh, interview, Mo just played uh, the trailer of Mirabel. One better uh, movie, something where you one package where you do. Mo would play the trailer so people go feel understand uh, the kind better works where you don't do. Let's check out this uh, trailer of Mirabel. Nassau. Mirabel. Nassau. <laughs> okay, um, Judith, let's talk about, you know, your, your movie production, movie direction. Let's talk about, you know, your journey from being an actor to going into filmmaking. Tell us about it. Um, it was actually a tricky one, actually, when it started. So I started off as an actor. And when I came into the industry, I came into the industry in 2004. Then I was still in school. I was in my final year in the University of Lagos. And then I did um, two films and I had to stop totally because it was affecting school. Mm. And in 2010, when I was doing my master's degree, I realized I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to be here. You know, so I came back into the industry and the first main thing I did at the time was um, Tinsel. And I saw a lady, you know, handing the camera. <laughs> and that was like massive for me because prior before that, I thought women were only either an actress, a makeup artist, you know, or a costumier. I didn't really know a woman could be more in the industry. Hmm. And I saw Tope Oshu. She was directing. She was also, you know, behind the cameras doing one thing. And, and I was like, I want to be like this. Hmm. Hmm. You know, so I, I, I had that hunger to be more, to, to do more things and to add more value to my industry started burning. And in 2014, I started my production company, Judith Audu Productions. And um, I also wanted to be an employer of labor and do something that I felt I would love to see in a production that I probably wasn't really getting enough of, or I have seen some actors that I felt were really good and I would love to challenge them to become more, mm -hmm. you know. And um, then I did my first short film called Not Right in 2014. Um, I had my friend on, I got Omo Omidada, Udwak Obong Patrick directed it, and Annie Yohu acted on it. And then um, when we finished the short film, then I had a blog where I was profiling actors and writing about film festivals um, called Judith Out Blog. And I was writing a lot about film festivals, and I was like, well, I might as well just put my own film in these film festivals, you know. Mm -hmm. um, not thinking I did anything so gang gang, mm -hmm. but well, I just felt highest they would say no, you know, they yeah. would either accept it or not accept it. And the film now went on to get all best short film nominations, including at the AMVCA. And I was like, oh wow, I didn't realize the film was this good. <laughs> 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 you wow. know, and as if that was not enough, I now had people come all the way from Poland, 
massive team like with heavy cameras I've not seen before. You know, I had like over um, eight people come all the way from Poland, massive um, white people, you know, with big, big cameras to do a documentary on me for five days, you know, following my life. I also had a radio show there wow. uh, where I was profiling actors, you know, so I had a radio show. I had a blog where I was writing about actors. I had another blog where I was writing about food recipes. And um, I was a judge on one of your programs that at the time uh, was a food show, mm. you know, so a lot was happening at the time. So these guys wanted to follow my life for five days to see how, what I do and how it is to be a, you know, Judith Aoudou. And um, it was a show called Women at the Edge of the World, men doing exceptional things. And I was the first woman to feature in the, in, in the series from Africa. That was like, massive. Amazing. Uh, then in 2015, I had an opportunity by chance. It was, it was, it was like a serious opportunity. I wish I could talk about it, but time would not allow <laughs> to do my first film. And I now brought again my friends that I believed, you know, could do a lot of amazing things. Rudolph Obon Patrick. So that was the first film I produced. Um, that was the first film on Patrick directed, the first feature film he directed. We also had a soft Jay on it, who also, it was his first in experience, also the feature film set that mm -hmm. was like his, because three of us came together and collaborated to do it. Um, and that gave me to the amazing Just Not Married. That mm -hmm. changed all our lives. Wow. Um, when the Toronto International Film Festival came, we actually entered the film. We didn't really know there was a spotlight, particularly on Hollywood at the time on the city to city. And I got a mail from the director of the festival, Cameron Rayleigh, asking me if I would like my film to feature. And I was like, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? It, but I, of course. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. this is the Toronto International Film Festival. This yeah. is one of the big five. Yeah. Because film festivals in the world yeah. and my was going to be screening there. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. And, you know, I'd like to ask you at what point you went to get your, your certificate for film directing in London. That was in 2018. So every time I want to delve into a new terrain, like when I wanted to move from acting to, to producing, yeah. I did a short film called not right. That was me trying my hands in producing, and I realized, oh, this is where I wanted to be. And then in 2018, after um, understudying a lot of amazing and great directors, mm -hmm. like um, the great legendary Tade Ogidon, um, the great Niji Akoni, you know, um, a lot of amazing directors that I have shadowed and seen, you know, their work and learned on the job what they were doing, mm -hmm. I felt, okay, it's time for me to also do this. And in 2018, um, when I did Mirabelle, was also me now debuting as a director. And then I wanted to know more about it. And I went to the London Film Academy um, to get a degree for directing hmm. um, and see how it was being done. So I've seen how it was being done practically. Let us see how, you know, learn the theoretical part and then put it together and see how we can make it flesh out. Hmm. And a lot of people were now asking me then, are you still acting? Are you still acting? You seem to be doing a lot of things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So 2018 was a groundbreaking time for me because after I debuted, I debuted as a director, I actually, that year, got to win an award for directing, producing, and acting. Wow. And I was, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. So yeah. I could do it all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why do one when you can do when all? you can do all. Yeah, true. But uh, now, looking at it, we know that uh, being a director takes a whole lot because you are you're practically the one who calls the shots. You're the one who would make sure this uh, this camera angle is this way and that way, you know. So it's it's a lot of work being a director and being a producer and a director on the same set. It's uh, how how are you able to keep the balance between these two major roles in filmmaking and 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 a function at high capacity when it comes to your projects? Because now 
you are a producer, it's your project, you're directing it. So how are you able to, you know, manage both, you know, and manage it so well? You should add acting too, because most times... Yes, act, acting, actually, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the lead actress. I think it's I I I I would say I have mastered the art hmm. of knowing how to do all this together. I love managing things. I really love um, bringing a script from scratch okay. to finish. I really love that challenge of this is impossible and I'll do it hmm. without stressing anybody. Without most times when you're on my set. You're working, but you don't realize you're working because of the kind of environment I create when you're on my set. Mm. Uh, because I'm an actor, so I know how to how to make people comfortable. I know what I want people to do to me, so I do it to people on my set. Mm. So they are comfortable being there, you know, when you're a part of the pit. So this is what I do as a producer. I make sure I get the best hands on set. I don't compromise on my crew at all. So my crew, my cast, I don't compromise. So I have the best hands on set. Everybody is manning their department. Everybody is doing what they are supposed to be doing without anybody having to watch their back, without everybody, anybody having to say, oh, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Oh, no, this is the wrong costume. Oh, no, this is the wrong setting, you know. So before set, I would have had my producer, the producer in me would have made sure I've covered everything. Paid everybody. I pay everybody 100%, so I won't be thinking of anybody's money on set. Wait, you pay them you know. before they come on set? Before they come on set? Yes, yes I do that. Uh, uh, when are you, you doing that? When are we not work with yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You should do something. <laughs> That's good. Though. I don't want to go thinking that ah, I never paid this person. No, you don't have to go <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But, so, but so paying 100%, that. are you not scared that something might happen along the line and they might, you know, your They won't be 100% competent. competent, 100% committed to the, to the job. But well, that's the thing. I don't, I don't work with those kind of people. Hmm. Okay. I've not had those kind of people before because most of the crew that I work with are crew that they are really good at what they do. They are professionals. Hmm. Let me use that word. And I've, most of them will become family. So we've worked together for a very long time. So I know this is how this person is. Most times people, there's a time someone told me that, ah, Judith, they always put us for ABC. Because I probably would have paid them like three months before time. Ah, so they <laughs> must walk the walk. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know, and, nice. and uh, so, but that's just for me to have, I've, I've, I've actually had a time where there was an actor I paid and the actor couldn't make it to set. Hmm. So what but happened? immediately they couldn't make it set. They sent me back the money on the spot immediately. Wow. Okay, at least that, you know, that was so noble that, of them. Wow. Yes. That's why I say I don't work with people that are not professionals. Mm -hmm. Because if something happens, okay, I've done this. You know, I have to get another act. I have yeah. to also pay that other act. Yeah. So you have to send back. As long as it's not my fault that you couldn't make it set, then, well, you have to send back the money. You know, I've had two occasions where that happened, and it wasn't actually an issue at all. Okay. Um, so, I, I, so I said to this directing, this I'm producing part of me, and then the directing part, while I'm doing that, I'm also already um, talking with my technical crew as the director. Me and my DOP, we are usually like best friends mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, this. Mm -hmm. You know, so we are already, like, talking, planning, like, okay, what, what am I going to use? What equipment am I using? What yeah. stuff am I using? So we are already talking about this already, you know. So that directing part is also there. Then the acting part mm -hmm. would read your lines, you know, prepare, know what you are going to do. So when I come on set, I take the cap off and wear the right cap at the appropriate time, and none of them suffers. Mm. Mm. That is, wow. that's, that's, that's you know, interesting. Jack of all trades. Every department is checked. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody knows what they are doing. Everybody is good at what they are doing. Everybody is there. So nobody suffers. Nobody realizes, oh, okay, producer, we need you now. Or, oh, you know, where is, uh, there's no director on this set. No, never. You know, mm. never. Nothing like that. Mm. All right. You Jimmy, know, let's so talk about I, I think it's just the right thing. The right thing. Very Makes important. Sense. Let's talk about how you decide what stories to tell. And, you know, we know that the first reason why a lot of people make movies, not just to tell our stories, but also to make money. 
And there will be conversation, there's been arguments back and forth about how people want to laugh, people don't want anything too serious. But life is, life is not always full of laughter. There are lots of serious things happening. Your movie, uh, your, feature, your short film, Not Right, was talking about gender-based violence. So it was talking about something that happens in our society. How do you decide what film to shoot? And um, in terms of telling our own stories and the, the negativities that we have to explain, you know, how important is it that we tell those stories vis-a-vis -vis the need to make money as well? Well, here's the, here's the thing. Um, like you said, people come into this industry for different reasons. You know, some people come into the industry because they want to make money. Some people come into the industry because they want to make an impact. Some people come into the industry because they just love storytelling, you know. Uh, so people are here for different reasons. Not everybody is here because they want to um, make, make they want, because they want to do a social impact kind of film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what I do, like you said, my first film was about domestic violence. So I try to find a balance. A balance between, so in, in Judith Audio Productions, we have an arm where we call the social, the social, um, the social impact arm. So we have, we do like the film a year. Last year, what we did was a documentary on breast and cervical cancer. And to do that, we actually use an all female crew because we, we noticed that in, in the industry, there are some departments that you don't really have females that you, when you search for the sound, the sound department, and we're beginning to have a lot of good women handling sound. Now we have a lot of amazing women directing, a lot of, a lot of amazing women editing. Most of the top films that you've seen in Nigeria for the past two years have been edited by women, hmm. you know. And so women are really taking technical, you know, uh, they're going backstage now and doing a lot of amazing stuff. And um, so we do that. We had the film done for domestic violence. We had a film done for breast and cervical, to handle breast and cervical cancer. And most of our films, when you watch them, there's always something you take home. There's always something that sits with you without all spoon feeding you and saying, this is what you should learn, this is what you should learn. You know, so when like 1,000 people watch our films, you probably will get 1,000 different things, but you go home with something very important. You know, and I've been blessed to have a G, um, Uyoyo Adia, who actually does a lot of amazing social um, impact kind of films. Her first just film, Hashtag The Fourth Side, which we also produced, was talking about when you have you, impact of wrongful rape accusation on people. And there was a time we had that a lot where people were just coming up and claiming people raped them, but it was a lie. But nobody comes back and says, oh, it's not a lie. But this person's life has been destroyed. Yeah. People commit suicide. People lose their lives because of that. You know, so that film was about the impact of wrongful um, rape accusation. And then there was another one on depression called Lost. You know, sometimes your strong friends are the ones that are depressed. You know, but they have this smile always covering on their face. They're always happy. They're always trying to motivate you. But they are the ones feeling down. You know, so most times when you realize, it's always too late. Mm. You know, so there have been a lot of all amazing films. And then there was Exit, which was also about um, domestic violence. We always talk about domestic violence from the eye of the woman, getting that men also go through domestic violence. You know, emotional abuse is one of the biggest domestic abuse ever. You know, and they've been there a lot of that. But nobody really talks about it because it's Africa. A man cannot come and say, my wife is abusing me. Yeah. People will be like, which kind of man? <laughs> you know? But they are dying inside. Yes. So we have a lot of this kind of films. And I say, how you smile? They'll be like, I say, you, you have experienced it. <laughs> <laughs> then what have you? No, not, not, no, not, no, really, not really. No, I haven't. I haven't. Ah, look, I look, I look. No, I haven't. No, no, I haven't. But why do, why do we now yeah. we have a society that sort of shames men to admit to these admit things? That, because yeah. it's assumed that the man has to be the man has strong, to be strong or macho. Yeah. And you know, if he admits to this, it makes him look weak. Why? It's it, it's wrong. So I'm really I'm glad that you and your your team are telling these stories from the perspective of a man. 
It's, it's very important that we have this conversation. Yeah, it's good that uh, we realize yeah. that from all the uh, the um, movies we've been talking about, they are usually they are all social conscious movies, knowing that they are trying to tell a story, trying to change a, 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 a narrative, trying to uh, educate people, you know, and things like that. But um, I with this kind of uh, society, where like Olive said earlier, we like people like to laugh. So. Is it that uh, you don't really think that those are the kind of movies you should make? Is it, your, is it not in your forte to make these kind of movies? It's, it's normal. It can be that, no, we only focus on these kind of movies that we produce. Is that what it is for the Judith Audu production uh, team as it is? Is that what it is? Well, that's why I say we try to find a balance. Okay. So we do, we do, we, we do the social, the social um, impact films, mm -hmm. and we also do the commercial films. Okay. Um, me, I love them. I, I love crime. I love I love I love crime films. I love horror films, which I can't really do so much. But <laughs> yeah. I love a lot of crime. I don't. I'm not really a romantic. I don't really like romantic films. I like romantic such. films. I'm not, yeah, I'm not so much a comedy fan as such. I love and my films most times, if you notice, they don't really have a happy ending as such. Yeah. Because, life, because that's yeah. life. Life doesn't. It's not always. Sometimes. Life doesn't always have a happy ending. Yeah. So I'm a realist. Yeah. You know, but then I have to find a balance between making a commercial film, mm -hmm. a creative film, an artistic film, joining all of them together. You have to make money at the end of the day, else mm -hmm. we'll just have accolades, nothing to show. Last last. You know, so as a filmmaker, I try to find a balance. Just Not Married was a crime film. You know, I've had the family. The family was a family kind of film. It was commercial. I've had Bedroom Point. Bedroom Point actually won Best Comedy Film in over like five film festivals, hmm. you know, and I had a lot of amazing directors I respect so much calling me to say that's like one of the best comedy films they've watched. Wow. You know, right. I've, so I've, I've, I, I found a balance between that. I have, I have, um, I can't wait for you guys to see the film. I've been rounding up post-production for throughout this lockdown. It's called The Session. Okay. It's an amazing, um, intense drama. Hmm. you know, that everybody will be able to relate with. The entire family can watch it. People that are married, people that are not married. Um, so you know a lot of things that married couples are, you know, fighting with hmm. how they try to find a balance and try to compromise. Hmm. But in that film, there is also the, the, the gender inequality thing in the film. Okay. You know, um, parents preferring a, to have a son as against a daughter. daughter. Thank God that is almost fading out yeah. now. Yeah. Um, you also have domestic violence in that film. Hmm. You know, so there's a lot of things in that film that, but when you're watching it, you, you are entertained. Hmm. But you are learning. Which you is know, very important. And then you finish what you film and you feel very filled. So I, 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 I've tried to find how to balance that. And um, we keep trying to be better. We can always be better. Yeah. You know, so as, as, as you did our production, as it is, what we do is try to find a balance, do that, and then do this. Like I said, I did a documentary on breast and spiker cancer. So that's a documentary that would be aimed at different things. We've taken that to female secondary schools did that mm. in partnership with Nigerian Port Authority. So we're mm. taking that to schools for people you to know, know that you can actually prevent spiker cancer, which a lot of people don't know. Mm. It's the only cancer that is actually preventable, but people don't know. Yes. You know, so we need to educate people on that and then talk about breast cancer too, because those are the two highest killers of women in Nigeria. And we still, we don't know, you know, and it's preventable, you know. And I'm also working on another documentary about women that can actually, that have the gift of fertility. You know, so we try to do things and still trying to find a balance and make money, but also have these artistic films. So you have the accolades and... And the money as well. That is necessary. <laughs> Judith, I, I'm really impressed. You know, I've known you, but I feel like I'm seeing a different side to you. I like that you're very, uh, you're, you're encouraging women to take up space. And now more than ever, it's important that we have such conversations. The African International Film Festival has done their bit in trying to ensure that, I think it was last year or two years ago, that the focus was on women in film. And, you know, you mentioned whilst you were doing your, your movie about uh, breast and cervical cancer, and you had an all-female team. I'm curious, could you find a female gaffer? And if not, like what were the roles you found it really difficult to find females doing? 
It was in, I think, 2015 that I've actually, I, that I wanted to do this, um, to have an all-female crew, mm -hmm. you know, do a film. And at the time, I couldn't find a female sound. Mm. There was only one person that was um, female that was a sound record and she was in Abuja at the time. Flashback to 2019, when I now actualized it, I actually do have a lot of amazing female sound now. We have a lot of amazing female gaffers. Yes, we have amazing female gaffers, like really good, really, really good. I had Flora on my set. Flora was mentored by um, Mato, Machi Yusuf, who is one of my favorite gaffers. Um, so the good thing is we have a lot of men. Um, Joy was the one that, was, that handled sound on the set, and Joy was mentored by Pius, who is one of the number one sound men in Nigeria. So we have a lot of men that are doing good, taking women under their wings to train them. Hmm. So things are changing and it's amazing to see that. I remember I asked um, Pius one time and he told me he always does have a female assistant to learn. So he's consciously actually looking for women that are interested in doing sound because he said, came to notice, which is also the same thing a lot of people say, when a woman is doing something technical, she's very meticulous. Yeah. So she pays yeah. more attention to detail than when a guy is doing it. Mm -hmm. And this is not um, rubbing anybody off or saying anybody is not doing it well, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's just what they felt. It's the same thing as when a woman is eating. You know, mm. so so there are a lot of men. I, I mentioned earlier that some of the biggest films that were edited um, in Nigeria was done by a woman. That's actually Victoria, and she's the wife of one of the greatest filmmakers we have, Nii Akimulaya. He trained her, you know, and he has trained a lot of amazing um, oh, yeah. editors too. <laughs> Dan is one of them. He has one, you know, best editing for it too, mm. you know. You know, so a lot of these amazing men that have done really well in the industry are taking women under their wings to train them. So yes, now we have a lot of women in these other departments that are not seen before. So you'll be on a set now, you can actually see a woman running around fixing the lights. You can see a woman holding a boom mic. You know, that's, that's a thing of joy there. You can see and a woman, it's, it's so you know, beautiful. Hang, hang her, hang her. Yeah, you know, it's beautiful. Now more than ever, I think I'm know, really proud. I'm proud yeah, of all this and yeah. Biggest, um, nice, the biggest and awesome cinematographers you can work with. Mm -hmm. um, she's really good, you know. So this is really good, you know, seeing that this is happening now. Okay, so. I'm uh, so happy to be at the industry at this time. I am too, so, I uh, am. Judith, my final question, Lily. Uh, you're a producer, an actor, a director. If they ask you to choose one, which one you go do? <laughs> See, set up. You have to choose one, producer. For the rest of your life. Set up director. <laughs> you have to choose one. Which one you go do? For the rest of your of, of, of your career, which one you want to do? If they ask you to choose one. I would actually say producing, maybe. Okay. Even though acting is my first love. <laughs> you know why I would say producing? Why? Because that's like the god of all of them. Hmm. The producer employs everybody. Yeah. The producer chooses everybody. So the producer is the one, even though at the end of the day, director, director usually gets the credit yeah. for, you know, um, owning the script. But if the producer does not employ the right director, it won't, that won't happen. Hmm. You know, if the producer doesn't employ the right actors, the producer doesn't make sure the right crew come together to make the film, yeah. that won't happen. So everybody comes on set, you pay them, they act, they go home. But the yeah. producer continues the job to the producer dies. That makes sense. And also, you know, it's your vision. <laughs> At the end of the day, you're able to translate the vision, yes. you know, by choosing the people that you want. My own final question, Judith, would be words of advice for a first-time director, producer, or actor. Here's the thing about directing, like um, he said earlier, yeah? A director is supposed to be conversant with the entire department in a film set. You don't have to be 100% good at them, but you need to understand all the departments. You how need to work. understand how colors work. Yeah. So you can talk to your costume. Yes, you need to understand what kind of makeup is needed. You need to understand these things. You need to understand light design. Mm -hmm. You need to understand art direction. You need to understand how you're going to block, what lens works for what, and how when you are blocking this. You don't have to know it 100%. That's why you are employing these people. 
But if you don't know them, somebody can come on your set and tell you this thing cannot be done. Yeah. But since you don't know, you stop it. Hmm. But if you know what you are doing, when you are talking to people, you talk to them with authority because you yourself understand that this thing can be done. So I would say, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry to jump on these things. Hmm. Take it step by step True. and learn how everything True. works. True. You know, I know that the industry, it's not, now this is for actors. It's not all about glam. It's hard work. It's hard work. You know, but people never know this until they come on a set and then they'll be like, wow, I know nothing like this. This won't be. You know, it's serious hard work. So you need to know that there is a lot you put in. So be patient. Be patient. Don't 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 be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Be patient. Exactly. Be very very, very disciplined. Be very disciplined. I, I can't even overemphasize how important this is. <laughs> you would pick a disciplined actor over a talented actor. Definitely. Fantastic. Definitely. So be very disciplined. Definitely. Nobody likes having divas on their sets. Yes. I've paid you to come yes. to the set to work. Come do your walk. job. <laughs> yeah. You know, do your job and go home. Don't come here giving me attitude. Yo, I paid you to be here. <laughs> you know, so be patient, very disciplined. Yeah. Hone your read. Read, read. Thank God everything is available. Exactly. Read. Read, read yourself. And the good thing about this, the good thing about this is that look. we're in a lockdown, and this is an opportunity for many people to read and keep, you know, improving themselves and getting better at their talent. This has actually really been an eye-opening conversation. And Judith, you have my respect in more ways than I can mention. Thank you so much for joining us on the show Thank today. you, and please, when next you did audition, Happy. because as you they pay 100% like this. Call us, oh! 100%, now, let's <laughs> work. Let's work. Yeah.